Welcome to Breaking the Vow on Strong Island Radio. This is a show where we turn pain into power and find recovery after divorce, separation, and breakups. This is where we push the emotional hang-ups to the side and create a plan to reach our best possible potential. This is where the next chapter starts and how the healing begins. So let's welcome your hosts, Teresa D. and Benny, the Life Coach. Hey, everybody. (laughs) Welcome back to another edition of Breaking the Vow. This is where we, you know, we turn pain into power, but we are also going to take it down a little bit. And today, I am Benny, the Life Coach, as always. And with me, as always, is... Teresa D. So, queen of everything, by the way. We're not going to point <laughs> that out. But, so we we have had so many guests, and every once in a while we like to clear the room, correct? Yes. And just speak plainly, just the two of us. And one of the things we, we started to talk about was uh, loss. Everyone experiences loss. Loss is, is not limited or specific to only certain people and loss comes in a lot of different ways so now loss of life loss of friendships loss of relationships loss of wages loss of finances loss of jobs loss is a very very real part of life as far as the losses that come with divorce so there's there's a process to each their own which means everyone goes through their loss their own way I experienced my loss. Teresa, you experienced your losses. Mm -hmm. It's safe to say that you tell me if I'm wrong. Everyone goes through losses, correct? They do. And then you, you can do one of two things. You can focus on the loss, which everyone's welcome to do. You're welcome to focus on whichever direction you choose. But the truth is, and it's like we Teresa and I say to each other all the time, if I'm down, she says it to me. If she's down, I say it to her. We still got a race to run. Yeah. We got a life to live. We got we a do. show to do. We have we have we have work in front of us. So how do we turn that loss into hope? And how do we keep going? How do we stand up when it feels like we can't put our own two feet on the floor? Now, Teresa, how I I'm sure you've experienced loss that has just Shaking you at the heart. Yeah. And what do you do? How do you find your source? You need to regroup. Mm -hmm. You need to meditate. You need to clear your mind. And you need to move. Well, that's... So that's interesting that you say the word move. So when when you create movement, physiologically, your body goes through changes, correct? Yeah. So one of the conversations we had before we started the show today is talking about exercise, diet, proper sleep patterns, yes. which as somebody with insomnia who Right, exactly. I don't I don't sleep so so well. Um it, it's it, it's I understand it's easier said than done sometimes because mm-hmm. you know, but loss is going to happen. And I I have had clients where I I will never tell anyone, hey, everything's going to be okay. No, because sometimes it's not. Right. Everything ends badly, otherwise it wouldn't end. So I showed you the video of this young woman who got the golden buzzer. Yes. Oh, my God. Love that. So she has cancer. She has 2%. Yeah, a 2% chance of living. And she goes, well, it's not zero. Right. And I was like, wow. Wow. The like song. That's mind blowing. So, it's, it's if you go on YouTube, uh, the name of the song is called "It's Okay." It's okay, and I think she calls herself Nightbird when she sings, and that's like a, a personality that she yeah. created, right? Yeah, it's like her safe way. I I love that. You know, I I love that, and and I think that again is just. If you're gonna replace thought with action, you have to come up with something. Yeah. That makes sense to you. Yeah. It's that's her power of positivity. I, I, it's it, her positivity bubble. I I I I, I was blown away. Yeah, me and, too. And, you know, I won't if I'm gonna be like anyone in my life, I yeah. wanna be like that. Yeah. You know, because 
Ooh, ah, man, I, I get shaken up in traffic. Yeah, I know. You, I, well, Everybody I know. gets road rage. Then well, you look at her, you're like, wait a minute. I, 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 I really have a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. Listen, you, I've experienced your road rage. <laughs> you've been on the phone with me, and I'm like. I'm driving. We're having in the in midst of like midst normal, of a conversation. normal conversation. I start cursing oh, and God. screaming like yes. a bloody trooper, yes. and then I just go back to it. Like okay, right. so, but uh, you, you know, we we tend to like get so hung up on this insignificant. Yes, completely insignificant. I'm, if you look at Nightbird and you look at your road rage on the road, it it was well, bullshit. It's, I'll even right. use the curse. It, it is it's yeah. all bullshit. Well, it's all ego. Yeah, true. It's all ego. Like, they cut me off. I will say, though. <laughs> Everybody's an idiot <laughs> on the road except you. <laughs> 100%. 100%. I think everyone that experienced road rage yes. is the same thing. I yep. mean, like, look, well, well, a lot of times, so I don't know, man. I, I have I have to deal with the FDR and then the Harlem River Yeah, drive. and that's not easy, I must say. No, I must say it, too. And I, it, it, So as you're driving and, you know, there's people that are, like, weaving and, it's like, buddy, yeah. we're not going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. We're not going. Where anywhere. are you rushing to? Yeah, hurry up and stop. Hurry up and stop. And then, and then, and then, when I get over, right when I'm about to get onto the upper level of the GW, there's, you know, there's homeless people stand there waiting. I asking know. For money. One time, I actually had to call the police because um, the woman was like in mid nod. I mean, she was nodding out, oh. and I was like, yo, that. I called them like, listen, I know they're there every every day, but this one's nodding out yeah. so I'm like you might want to check that one out and they're yeah. like the, the officer that answered the phone was really cool about it was, hey thanks thanks for saying that man appreciate that right he was really cool about it but at the same time I'm it's it's it listen it's it's, it's I'm sure it's a nuisance but they went and I, I believe they uh they removed her from standing in the middle of traffic um but back to it like okay that's my problem you know what I don't have? I don't have cancer in my lungs. No. My spine or in my liver. No. Nor do I have a 2% chance Except of survival. Living. Right. And here it is. Like, the, the, there's my day. Right? I, I went to work. I did this. I did my day job. I had problems on the phone. I had this. But you know what? I'm coming home. Yeah. You know. And I, you're I, waking up the next day. Yeah. And and, and here's, here's this woman who created a song. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what she said that was so influential to me? You can't wait for things to be good, for everything to be good, to be happy. You I'm, can't. I might be paraphrasing, but I'm pretty sure that's what she yeah. said. I, I was just like, what? And then, you know, another thing she said before she started is saying, um, I want people to realize I am so much more than the bad things that happen to me. Yes. Oh, my God. What's that? Like, come on. <laughs> oh, my God. That was... <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Because, genius. Total genius. Well, the fact is, I think we all get caught up in these bad things and we allow that to Yeah. To make take us, over. Yes. That that makes us who we are. Right. So, you know, I, listen, I've I've worked with cancer moms and everything is about what happened. And I uh, listen, I, I I cannot say what it's like to live in that in that situation. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be afraid to lose a loved one. I know what it's like to almost lose a loved one and then see them, you know, go through whatever they went through. But I, again, which is why I never tell everyone it's all going to be okay. Right. Because I don't know. Because you can't. But, you know, I, I could do one of two things. I can live in it or I can learn to navigate through it. Right. Which is difficult. I mean, well, how many, how many events have we done? I don't even know, to be a honest. A lot. You, oh my God! You know what came up in our Facebook me memories? What we did um, in Lindenhurst, we did a uh, an event, uh, a, ch a children with pediatric cancer event. I just shaved my head, which I'm not having bald. Yeah, time. for St. Baldrick. Yes, and yeah. there was, and I we had to fill up a tub with water. Yes, the dunk tank. The dunk tank was rusted yeah, water, by the way. It was. It was I very remember. Cold. Well, yeah, we had the fire department come and fill it up from a hydrant that mm -hmm. hadn't been used in a while. Yeah, so the water was a little brown. <laughs> tasted a little tinny, I must say. Yuck. And, oh, my God. And and you yeah. got these kids throwing the ball. Yep. And my job as being the guy on the dunk tank yep. is to make fun of the fact that they're missing the target. Yes. And then there are some people who might be in the room. <laughs> 
<laughs> who ran over and hit the bullseye. <laughs> Boom, I go Boom. right into the water. It happened more than once. Chrissy did it. You did yep. it. All the people that I dare yeah. not mention their name did you it. You know why? Because here the kids are. They really want to hit the target. They really wanted to see me go. My fat, bald-headed body go right into the they water. They so did. So <laughs> we just go behind and we hit the target. They ah, think they got it. That was great. That was great. Okay, mm-hmm. so wait. Let's 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 do a commercial real quick, and <laughs> and we're gonna come back and we're gonna pay some bills. So we'll see you folks in a couple minutes. Okay. Ben. I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Wrap America. Yes. Life changing. Yes. No, no, no. Wrap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It holds patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. Advanced protection wrap. Yes. Is economical and a practical choice. So call 516-830-0040 or you can go onto their website, rap-america.com. All right. Since we have a meeting after this in West Islip, yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. Because I'm, I'm going to be hungry. So we're going to go to Our Little Italy, 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631-661-6246. Pick up and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www.ourlittleitalymenu.com to find out what they have. Oh, and- I heard they have good chicken parm. Hey, Ben. Yes? I need to talk about solar energy. Okay. I Lighthouse Energy Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women we believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity stability and respect by viewing their customers as partners any energy project you have in mind call on lighthouse energy www.lighthouseenergypartners.com 631-275-0091, 631-275-0091, located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house. Maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, contact certified drafting, Selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact Certified Drafting. Certified Drafting will handle all building department matters, serving Long Island for over 20 years. www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516-844-0420. Or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com. Tell them you heard about this from the show, from Breaking the Vow. You're going to receive a 10% discount. We love Kevin. I love Kevin. I think that's pretty awesome. And we're back. Yes, we are. We are back, <laughs> as a matter of fact. So we, I have, all right. Ready for this? I'm ready. I'm going, I'm going in a direction going that I there? swore that I wouldn't go in. Oh. I can't say who my favorite guest was. And there you are, can't? I won't. Okay. Because you've had people ask you. Yes, I have. Who was Ben's favorite guest? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could say that I had. I can't say. I can't pick favorites. Like a dad doesn't pick a favorite child. If, Who are you kidding? Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. But I never <laughs> did. So, okay. All right. So I can say Mace in Your Face was probably uh, one of the funniest guests that we had. Yes. The guy, that guy, that guy yeah. kept going even in the green room yeah, afterwards. He He's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, Shell to Shine, I yeah. thought was Angie. brilliant. Angie, Angie was really was good. Angie was amazing. Yeah, and she's the can, she's the Canada link. She is, and and we're gonna be bringing her back. I think. Yeah. I think what's great to know is that there are other people in this world, even though they don't live in New York or they're not right. even in this country. There is so many similarities, so yeah. you know, you're not alone. That was that was that was definitely a good show. Yeah. Kevin was Kevin was a good show. You want to know why Kevin was a good show? Because we actually we we skipped aside from all the healthy stuff 
and we talked about the little, the, like the little craziness. Yeah. Of dating, mm-hmm. or was it my dating? Was it my craziness? Of we dating? only talked about your crazy dating. I don't think we talked about mine necessarily specifically. Yes, we did. We did mention it. Oh, uh, yo, we we went there. We went. Oh, the Starbucks thing. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> so to those who don't remember, yeah, there. Ben it, takes someone to Starbucks. He thinks he's getting laid. I, I never. <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever said that? I never. You didn't have to. It was it was my first episode out. We'll call it. Yeah. And I, I all I you mentioned had a lot to learn. All I mentioned is, <laughs> hey, I wonder if anything. I was like, yeah. Well, the answer is no. I found that out, but um, <laughs> I found that. Out. You know, I I think. Dating is such a strange Oh, it's a thing. shit show. <laughs> and I don't know that I would date me. In fairness, I I, I don't, don't know th- that I'd date me either. Uh, you're awesome. You are fun. You're awesome. I I'll, I'll I'll stick up for you on that. You are the best. I don't I think that well, I I'm also night and day different from that person. I mean, that was like yes. 14 yeah, years that was, ago. Yeah. That, that's a total 360 to <laughs> Yeah, now. I mean, I I'm not You're that right. guy. I'll I, give I you find that. I find humor in it. Yeah, I'll give you that. You are I, not the same person. So, I think the I think the first was it MySpace? Did I meet the first Oh my god, you're dating yourself. I am. I MySpace. well, I have dated myself and that's no mm. pun intended. So <laughs> So, I think I think I met someone off two people off MySpace, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, this is what crazy is." Yeah. I've gone on a lot of first dates, and I've left them there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, 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 um, I've left them there. Yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we're gonna address, guys. I'm gonna give it to you. Don't say this. So what's your story? Oh, <laughs> no. That is just somewhere between that happened more than once hell to you. no and fuck no. <laughs> that happened to you more than once, though. Oh, yes, so it did. So, like, uh, what's your story, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I just got to go to the ladies' room. <laughs> well, And I don't return. Well, I've done that. I've done that. I've, I've done, done that. that so many times. Like I said, I've only been on a lot of first dates. Yeah, I, I I've done that. I, I let someone sit at the bar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure, one hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel bad. And you about don't it. lead with that. What's your story? Come on. What's your story? Huh? What's your story? Oof. Yeah. <laughs> well, where that's a loaded question. Yeah, yeah. What's your story, pal? Right. Like, that's. A, I don't want to know his story though. No, no. no. I was thinking about dinner. Like, right, I was thinking, right. I was thinking. Right, I was thinking about if I'm going to order a Cosmo or a glass of wine. Hey, how about that, Ben? These guys are great. Right. I would start. I would open with that. Yeah. I think. I think do you think someone coming up to you and saying, "Hey, what's your story?" Is that like a uh, like a line of insecurity? Like it has to be. I think it's idiotic. It's completely ridiculous. What's the worst line you ever heard? What's your story? That's the worst line. Yes. I don't know. I, I never use because lines. I I guess because that irks me so bad. I, um, I remember. I remember when I was. Oh, younger. here's one. Go ahead. Someone said I was terrifyingly beautiful. What Terrifying the fuck does that mean? Beautiful. That is great. But I what does it mean? I would never say that to another human being. <laughs> You're that so just pretty. goes you scare to, me. That just goes to show you what screwed up people are out there. I do remember, and this was a long time ago. This was this was actually this was before my first marriage. I remember a one night stand, and I remember thinking, "This is gonna go poorly," hmm. because afterwards her leg, we were talking, and then her legs just started shaking violently, like one leg, and I'm like, uh, "Hey, um, what's with that?" And she said, she looked at me with this faraway, detached look, and she goes, oh, I'm sorry. 
it just does that sometimes. And I was like, holy shit. Because she's in my house, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I remember thinking, I'm like, all right, you got to go. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I kind of don't remember. I don't remember her saying very long mm-hmm. afterwards. I, 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 but I, I remember that. I do. I, dating is whether you I were can't. married once before or never married at all. Dating is awkward. It yeah. is uncomfortable. It's awful. It, it, it can be. It, it, can, it can be good. I mean, you, I'm I sure guess. You, you've had good dates. Yes. Very few. All right. So tell me what, what would you say? A woman calls you or a man or anyone calls you because we don't want to go gender specific. Mm. Okay. And says, what, what should I look for to be the, a, a great date? What's a great date? You know, I don't even know I have the answer to that question. I would definitely say just getting to know someone. Okay, so a movie. No. Because you're not talking. No. First of all, the movies now would they suck anyway. Yeah. They don't even have good movies anymore. I know. They don't well, COVID, I guess. Kinda. Yeah, I guess that kind of cut it short, but still. So COVID, COVID now, uh, the cool thing that I'm starting to see now is people are are there's a little freedom with the masks. Yeah. So it's Which not, is great. It's nice to see faces sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Because you don't know, right, you don't know what's under the mask. So we would, I, I think uh, Bobby and I were talking before about that weirdness of like, you know, back when we were younger, I remember going out to a club and then you would meet someone and the lights were a little crazy. Yeah. So you didn't necessarily know exactly what, they, but you thought they looked. Yeah. And then you end up in a coyote ugly situation. Ooh, I never said that, but yes. <laughs> Well, some people were like, did you ever think that maybe you're the ugly one? I'm 100%. I'm insecure. But but 100% I thought it was I was the ugly one. 100%. But there were times I remember remember one time um, I went outside and I was waiting for this girl to come out. And when she came out and she walked over to talk to me, she looked so differently from the way she looked inside. I didn't know it was her. So I kind of looked at her oddly and she's like, what are you talking about? She's like, wait, you know, and, and then she started talking. And I'm like, and it dawned on me. I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. That so was the it, difference between a strobe light and a street light. <laughs> <laughs> Something ain't right. It's the strobe light. That's great. And then what happened was like, I remember, I don't know how I, I, I don't think I, I've never given out a, 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 a fake phone number. Oh, I, I ne- have. I never did that. Oh, constantly. I never did that. I would either say. eight six seven five three zero nine. And you know what? A lot of people don't even they know don't. that. They don't. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> um, five, 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 Especially seven, eight, five. the young ones. They have no clue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I th- yeah, I never really, but I, I, I would back away somehow or something. But I, I, I don't know. I know that dating is so awkward. And now here's the thing. When you've been with someone for so long and then all of a sudden you're like thrusted back into the single <sighs> scene. It, it sucks. It's got to be disheartening. It right. sucks. So we're going to we're going to go to a commercial. We're going to pay a couple of bills and then we will see you shortly. Ben, I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Wrap America. Yes. <sighs> Life changing. Yes, no, no, no. Rap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It he holds actually, patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. It's Advanced protection wrap. Yes. Is economical and a practical choice. So call 516 830 0040 or you can go onto their website, rap America.com. All right, since we have a meeting after this in West Islip, yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh-huh, because I'm, I'm going to be hungry, so we're going to go to Our Little Italy, 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631-661-6246. Pick up and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www dot our little Italy menu.com to find out what they have. And- Ooh, I heard they have good chicken parm. Hey Ben. Yes. I need to talk about solar energy. 
Okay. I Lighthouse Energy Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women. Ooh. We believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field, we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes. Their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity, stability, and respect by viewing their customers as partners. Any energy project you have in mind, call on Lighthouse Energy, www.lighthouseenergypartners.com, 631-275-0091, located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house. Maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, contact certified drafting, selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact certified drafting. Certified drafting will handle all building department matters serving Long Island for over 20 years, www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516-844-0420, or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com. Tell them you heard about this from the show, from Breaking the Vow, and you're going to receive a 10% discount. We love Kevin. I love Kevin. I think that's pretty awesome. You are too funny. I'm not saying what she said for me to say because I'm not saying the story. <laughs> but I have, I, admittedly, admittedly, I have um, dating stories that I am less than proud of. Yes, and I know them. You, you, you do. I do. You do. I think. All right. You want you want real talk? I'll give you real talk. Go ahead. The one thing <laughs> I felt horribly about this. So that I was I was a lot younger, and oh, this is why I would never. I certainly wouldn't have dated me. Oh my god! So poor girl. So so we knew each other when we were younger. Right. But uh, all right. So when you're younger as a guy, I guess there's one goal. I don't know what the goal would be for a woman or a girl, but I know not what, that same goal. Could be. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. Girls like sex too, you know. Uh, I don't know. I have a, we have a word for that though. What's that called? A, a slut? vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, she said slut. I said a vibrator. That's great. All right. <laughs> all well, right. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at no. all. It's a God given gift <laughs> with batteries. So anyway. Rechargeable ones. Uh, <laughs> well, back then they didn't have them. So I remember this girl wouldn't um, do much. When we were, and, and I remember thinking, well, this has got to end because, like, what only thing she was willing to do wasn't just, just wasn't that much. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, all right, you're going to go your way. I'm going to go mine. And then I, I met her again in my older life. And I had to be about, I had to be about 20. And I realized that. Well, well how old when you, when you did this? 14? 15. Oh, God. 15, 16. And she was a year younger than me, maybe. I think she, I know she was younger Come than on. me. Well, I was also not really the sanest. No. Right. So then I was like, I was in my twenties or so. I think it was in my early twenties, and I saw her again, and I figured, hey, she still looked good. Maybe now she would be more interested in a different level of physical intimacy. Hmm. I was wrong, mm -hmm. and it was still kind of the same thing. And I remember thinking, ah, I'm not doing that right. So one night, I felt so, oh, so terrible. I'm totally telling on myself, folks. This is why I've become a life coach and changed my life. <laughs> so so one night, she, we were supposed to hang out, and I was just like, I'm not doing this. It's just going to be more of the same. And there, there's not going to be any sort of real physical intimacy other than little kissing and maybe a little, little step above that. So I was like, eh. So a bunch of my boys were like, listen, we're going to go to the movies. Why don't you come with us? So I called her up and said, listen, I got a thing I got to take care of. So I, I, I can't see you tonight, but we'll work something out. Mm. And she's like, is everything all right? I'm like, yeah, I can't really talk about it. It's a thing. I got, I got a thing. I got it's a do. thing. Yeah. Well, thing. I, I was also it's, less than innocent. It's then. a thing we got to do. It, I was less than innocent at the time. And mm -hmm. she figured, like, don't ask so then I go to the movie theater. I'm with a bunch of guys. We had a great time. We come out of the movie theater. And then uh, 
we come out of the movie theater. There was fire trucks and ambulances. We were we, and we were in the Meadowbrook movie theater. If you remember that on right. Hempstead Turnpike yeah. years ago, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, what happened? And I asked this girl, what happened? She's like, somebody got hit by a car. I'm like, oh, well, that sucks. So then uh, the next day, my buddy Ed calls me. He's like, hey, what'd you do last night? I said I went to the movies. He says, weren't you supposed to hang out with beep? I go. Yeah, but, uh, you know, nothing's going to happen. So what am I going to do? He's like, I went to the movies. He goes, oh, yeah? Went to the movies, huh? What movie theater did you go to? I went to the Meadowbrook. He goes, did you see anything happening outside? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. I, I, I did. I, there was uh, there was ambulances and fire trucks. He says, oh, yeah, what, what do you think happened? I said, I heard someone uh, got hit by a car. He goes, yeah, you know who got hit by a car? I go, who? He goes, beep. And he told me her name. And I'm like, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He was like, yeah, she went to the movies and she got hit by a car in the same movie theater that I was in. Uh, I remember thinking, fortunately, she didn't see me there because I, I might have felt a little bad. You think? Again, I was a very different you person. You were atrocious. I, I, I am telling on myself, folks, in 100%. Totally atrocious. So I go to him. I go, oh, I guess I got to go to the hospital. He goes, hold on. Because <laughs> I'm driving you because I don't want to miss this. And I, I remember... Oh my God, I'm so terrible. I feel bad about this. So I remember I we go in. He's not saying nothing. And I don't even know why he's with me. We I go into the uh into the little gift shop. Do you remember the pandas? Yeah. Not the pandas. No, no, the polar bears the for polar the bears. For, for the Coca-Cola ones. Yeah. They had one there. And I was like, oh, that's a good one. So I buy it. I find out where she is. She, she's in traction. Ben. Her legs up. She doesn't look her prettiest, I'll say. Of course not. She was right? just hit by something. What was she hit by? A so car? She's, yeah. Uh. I, I was told a car. Could have been a truck. I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm sorry. Ugh. So then I, you know the story. I so, do. <laughs> so then but I. hearing it again, it's like I'm reliving it. I feel bad. <laughs> so, so then I walk over and she looked at me adoringly like, he cares. Uh, and I hand her the panda bear or the, the polar bear on my like, yeah, here you go. And she looked at me and I go, Yeah, so I guess this isn't gonna work out. That's what you said? Yeah, I go, oh, sorry, man. I uh, hope you bad. feel better. And I turned around and walked away. And my buddy Ed's with me the whole time. I go, I go, not for nothing. What'd you want to come here for? He goes, That. <laughs> he goes, I wanted yeah. to see if that's what you were gonna do. I'm like, is that what you thought I was gonna do? He goes, I knew that was what you were gonna do. I was uh, so emotionally and, and spiritually and intellectually you were an unavailable. Emotionally, an emotional robot. I, well, I was a, I was a, I was a different guy. Yeah, I you were. Certain, you were kind of a dick. No, not kind of. Totally. And the, the, <laughs> so the whole thing about that is like I, you know, I was never a dad before. I never thought about people's feelings. I was such a selfish selfish person so like what I, what I learned about that is all of that was stuff that stemmed from my insecurity yeah and I mean I, I can look back on that and fortunately this by the way this 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 that, this, that young girl has become quite a uh, uh, an, a an inspirational and motivational woman and you know she's she's beaten uh adversity more times than once and she's uh you know she, she I, from what I'm trying to say, I think she overcame cancer. I mean, she's she's just wow, brilliant. like a superhero. And, yeah, no, she is. She's actually brilliant. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, I, we, we, I think we're friends on Facebook. Oh my uh, god, I would so never be friends with you again. I'm sure her memory and my memory of it are probably different. Yeah. At least I hope so. Yes. I mean, I I hope so. I hope. By the way, I'm sorry. You <laughs> should be. No, I I am, and I, I think know she you knows are. that. I I am certainly I not know that. You but are. like. That's the whole thing with dating. Um, there are people that are just so emotionally unstable, which I was. Uh, yeah. I mean, listen. Listen, I, we're I, all emotionally damaged. I was young. Hmm. That's yeah. still not an excuse. No, no. But I mean, my, I mean, it's not like I had Shakespeare te- teaching me romance. Uh, I, true. I had friends like Johnny the Rug. I, I mean, I, <laughs> And Johnny Garbage. Yeah, yeah, Johnny the Rug. Johnny the Rug would be like, hey, oh, not for nothing. Yeah, I remember I th- those were my friends. Yeah. You know, they were like, you know, peachy. You know, they, they, <laughs> they, they, you know, I, 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 I had a guy named Marco yeah. telling me, like, this is what you do. Vito. 
Vito was another one. Then, 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 then oh, and Victor. Victor Santana, God bless the dead. He told oh, me, God. listen, I'll tell you how you do it. Go, how do you do it? He goes, you treat a whore like a princess and a princess like a whore. And I go, this was my... Oh, God. But the, the, this was my Where do you influence. find these friends? It wasn't in, it wasn't in Bible school, man. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, it really wasn't. And then when I remember when I had a daughter, I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to have to deal with something like this. Yeah. God. God yeah, does karma. have a sense of humor. Karma. Yeah, but I have a gun. You know, like, yeah. I, I, listen, I am, a, I, am, I, am a, I am a mental health and coach, and, and I am a life coach, and I, and I believe in positive energy, and I believe in... But that was not very life coachy. I wasn't very <laughs> life coachy for a long time. I'm a very right. real human being. I actually celebrate these stories because, you, you know... Because you've learned and you've grown. You, well, I'm able to say, hey, you know what? I'm a real person that did really stupid things. Right. I'm capable of craziness. Yeah, I well, know. I know you. Uh, you do know. You well. You've seen. I've calmed down. You have. You really have. I have calmed down, yeah. and I also don't eat as crazy as I no. used to. But I do the food challenges. Yes, which is crazy. Some of them are. Yeah, they're nuts. They're they're just nuts. some of the food challenges. Are cr- the last one I did yuck. was canned bread Ugh, and Limburger gross. cheese. All right, wait. I think we got to pay some bills. I think we got to go yeah. to a commercial. When we come back, though, I want to talk about. The show that's coming up next week. Yes. Spiritual advisors, yes. mediums. That stuff is so crazy to me. You're yeah. going to teach me about this. It so. is. I love it. We'll speak we to you in a couple it. minutes. Ben, I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Rap America. Yes. <sighs> Life changing. Yes. No, no, no. Rap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It he holds actually... patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. It's Advanced protection wrap. Yes. Is economical. And a practical choice. So call 516-830-0040, or you can go onto their website, rap-america.com. All right, since we have a meeting after this in West Islip, yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh-huh, because I'm, I'm going to be hungry, so we're going to go to Our Little Italy, 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631-661-6246. Pick up and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www.ourlittleitalymenu.com to find out what they have. Oh, I heard they have good chicken parm. Hey, Ben. Yes? I need to talk about solar energy. Okay. I Lighthouse hear about Energy it. Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women we believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity stability and respect by viewing their customers as partners any energy project you have in mind call on lighthouse energy www.lighthouseenergypartners.com 631-275-0091, 631-275-0091, located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house. Maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, contact certified drafting. Selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact Certified Drafting. Certified Drafting will handle all building department matters, serving Long Island for over 20 years. www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516-844-0420, or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com. Tell them you heard about this from the show, from Breaking the Vow. You're going to receive a 10% discount. We love Kevin. I love Kevin. I think that's pretty awesome. That is not fair to judge me when we are in commercial break. (laughs) 
Because there are stories that yeah, I am I judge being, you all the time. I would too. So there are stories that I was encouraged to share that I am not going to share. We are going I to. Could. No, please don't. <laughs> so, so what we're gonna do? Um, we, we've we've talked about some of the greatest shows, and we talked about who we've had on there. And I can't say that I have a favorite. I think I I have uh, I love I, I certainly loved. Um, the uh, attorney for the child. Um, yes, that was that was really enlightening. Anne you know, Marie, Anne Marie Grattan, Jean, Jean, oh, Jen, Jen. Can't leave anyone out. Really. No, we really can't leave anyone no. out. So, but now we got something, and it kind of triggered from last one of our last shows about having spiritual advisors and mediums yeah. on. I've never done anything like that, so you got to tell know. me what that's like. I think that when you go on the journey of loss, mm -hmm. you have to come to a place of peace at some point, right? A hundred percent. If you don't, it, it's well, just going to be in, chaos. You're always in turmoil. Right, yeah, you're always in turmoil. You have to come to a place of peace. And I think that by getting more in touch with yourself mm -hmm. and meditating, sometimes doing yoga, I mean, everybody handles it differently. I think... You need to find your inner peace because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're never going to be happy. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, well, the guests that we're having on will take us on a spiritual journey on how you do that All right. and how you accomplish that. But we have two guests. Yeah, we do. So the second guest is a, is a spiritual advisor or a medium? They're both. All right, so what's a medium exactly? The medium talks to the other side. Me. Yeah. So that, that always freaks me out. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that it, it, you know, it's always. I went to, oh my God, I can't think of the guy's name. He was in the Westbury Music Fair. He used to be on TV. John Edward. Yeah. He's a friend of mine, yeah. I, re I remember seeing him, and he was yeah, like... Yeah, he's awesome. He's a, he's actually a contributor and a big supporter of Hope Floats. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. Will he come on the show? We yeah. got to get him on the show. We'll try. Well, yeah, let's give it a shot. Yeah. So I think that... I mean, I didn't know, you know, when you talk about, you know, loss and divorce and separation, mm -hmm. and I didn't know if this kind of fit into it, but on my journey, at least, I figured I've done it. Right. So it might be helpful to some people out there. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I, so I, I do know of people who um, unfortunately suffered the loss of their child. Yeah. Ugh. Subsequently. I don't know how you recover from that. So, and they, they ended up splitting after that happened. Yeah. They, ended up, they, they went through divorce after that. Yeah. They stayed together during, and then yeah. I guess after it, it happened. They they split. I, and you know, I don't know what I, I. You know, my whole thing was I always assumed my father, my old man, was going to come through. My mother was going to come. Yeah, through. you never know. And they're going to yell at me because I did something wrong. Yeah, Stop leaving never, the eye and plugged in. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to say. It, it, you never know. Honestly, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you know some people believe in it and some people don't. I'm open to it. Yeah, I do believe that it does happen only because of some experiences that I've had, mm -hmm. but I. In some cases, you know, maybe not so much. Well, Depends on the person. Well, when people start throwing letters, I, I'm feeling an H or a Z or a B. Yeah. I don't uh, know what that How many people don't means. have that? Like, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't... I, I'm not, I and hear I'm not a saying, name, Anne. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I know an Anne. The last name <laughs> is Smith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was Joan of Arc in a bit. Yeah, so like, I, 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 I get it. Like, yeah, I, I, you, you have to know... That first of all, you have to be open to it, and second of all, you have to believe that there is an afterlife. I think. Well, I, I, so I do know that that guy Einstein was pretty smart. You think? No, we're still talking about him. So Einstein <laughs> said, "Energy can neither cre be created nor destroy. Destroyed, it just changes forms." Right. So therefore, life is energy. Therefore, life cannot be destroyed. So I am a firm believer in the fact that, that you know, there's an energy. Like I remember after my father passed away, I remember I went into the bedroom, my mother and father's bedroom, and his nightshirt was left exactly where he put it. Yeah. 
and I remember looking at that, and I could feel yeah. him. I remember when my mother passed away, and my brother and I went to the uh, assisted living home in Florida, and we started packing up her things, and everything was exactly where she left it. Mm-hmm. And I could feel like energy. That's all I could say. I could feel something. Yeah. I don't know what it is, and maybe right. that's morning. I mean, listen, I'm sure there's a, there's a scientific or, or psych- psychiatric or psychological re- reason for all that stuff. All I know is I felt something. Right. I can remember, um, you know, my mom passed. It was it was that was hard because I was the uh, I was a healthcare proxy, so I had to sign. Yeah, remember that? That's I had, rough. A, I, had yeah. a, I had to sign the papers. Yeah, um, to uh, to take her off life support. Right, because she had a living will. She didn't want want that. And I remember what had happened during that. And however it was for me, it was a, it was something. You know, dreams or whatever came. Like I was walking down Forty Second Street. Remember, and then a, a butterfly like flew and landed on my shoulder. Yeah, in the middle of Midtown Manhattan. Yeah, and that never happens. No, come on. I've never. I, I think I've seen butterflies. Like I've never seen a butterfly in Manhattan. And then a couple of months after, not even a couple of weeks after that, I'm walking up Forty Second Street. And I'm going to work, and there's this little bird just like looking at me. Mm-hmm. I have pictures of this. Yeah, to prove it. And I and I just went. I walked up to it, put it on my finger, and I was like petting this little bird. I put it on my shoulder, and I started walking with it, and then it flew away. And then I think it was like a week after that, I saw a similar bird. It's like a, it's like a finch, mm-hmm. and it was dead. And I was like, I was like, oh my god, that hurt me. And then I was like, I remember saying, listen, ma. If you're trying to tell me something, please come back. I miss you. Like right. my mother, you know, my, I miss my mother. You know what I mean? And, and we're coming up on the anniversary of my mom's passing, which is why all of this is yeah. going to be pretty interesting. So then it was like, a, I don't know, maybe the next week, there was this little sparrow. Right. And I'm right by Brian Park. I'm across the street from Brian Park on 42nd. So I'm on the I'm on the north side, the uptown uptown side of 42nd Street. Brian Park is across yeah. the street, and this this guy is standing there, and there's this little sparrow just like standing next to him. And I look at him and I point at the sparrow. The guy looked at me like, "What are you? What are you weird or something?" I go, "Look, it's a bird." Right yeah. By and he just looked, and he was like on his phone. He like, shrug, shrug. I I kneel down, I put my finger out, I got pictures of this bird climbs up on my finger. I'm like petting it and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he's just sitting there looking at me and I'm petting it. And, and, and I walked across the street over to where the little the, the little like tables are. And I put the bird down and a bunch of sparrows just like flew in and surrounded me. And this woman told me, she's like, that means you have a connection. Yeah. And I don't know what it means. In fairness, I don't know what I believe. I don't know what I don't believe. But I do know that was the most touching and yeah, you felt heartwarming it. experience. Yeah. And I believe if there isn't it, I, I I firmly believe there's nothing so strong as a mother's love. No, there isn't. And if if so, we're gonna find out next week, <laughs> Ma. All right, I understand right. June tenth. I know what the date is. I understand that that was the. But please, if you're gonna come, say something nice. There's people around. Don't embarrass me. I'm, a- I'm gonna ask. <laughs> Do you remember when I did a book review and my mother was stood in the back and embarrassed yes. me? Yes. Yeah. I did a book review in a library and she's standing yep. up in the back. She goes, "Tell them the story about." And she went into it. Yep. Oh my god. All right. Yep. So we're we're gonna close up and the construction the constructive conclusion we're coming to today is don't go know, dating. Yeah. Don't go. Don't <laughs> date. Don't don't date, date Ben. <laughs> don't date. Well, you can't date me, but like I I I I could say don't date anyone that was like me. I could say that. I could say that wholeheartedly. Um, choose choose wisely who you spend your time with, and you know what? Believe because, you know, it doesn't hurt to believe in good things. So that being said, folks, yes. I am Benny, the life coach. And with me, as always, is Teresa D. And we will see you later. We will. Peace out. Bye.